So no methodology is going to be perfect. Um, you know, and there's caveats to threat infrastructure analysis, just like there is anything else. And I have three main points that we like to cover when introducing this methodology, uh, especially to newer analysts. The first being that all data sources have a bias. There might be gaps in collection, uh, specific processes that, that people follow and how they get their data, time zone skews, et cetera. There could be a number of things. Mm -hmm. So um, what are some examples like, like a, a drive-by malware? Might be through an, through an ad. So if we scanned it and um, we found that malware because that ad was playing, if we went back to the site a week later, it might not be there, correct? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's a great example. Um, another one could be the fact that when we do our routine internet scans, we can't scan the internet every single second that it's changing. And so scanning the, uh, the internet uh, one day may reveal uh, open ports on a particular server, and then the next day they might be shut off. Uh, so there's always some sort of gap in the collection. So when you're when we're scanning, it's not always consistent the same time every day, every single day, because it, to have that infrastructure, I don't think anybody could be able to have that. Yeah, it, it'd be tough to scale it. So so like even the threat actor, um, um, we have to keep them off, keep them on their toes when you're doing these scans because. If you're always doing it every Tuesday at 3 p.m., then yeah. they could change their website that when we go and scan them, that it looks normal. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and, and so like, uh, what's also important to note here as well is that sometimes you'll identify cases where there's no information at all. Now, keeping in mind that there's gaps in collection, it's not that, there, that something didn't exist. It just may not have been collected. The signals were probably there but no one actually captured them. So the website, the phishing website, maybe was up for an hour, and by the time we went to scan it, it was already shut down, yep. for example. Yep. And so we're, we are seeing that with uh, actors kind of taking note of the fact that if they're able to do something quickly, uh, that they may not be discovered. And so they might register infrastructure, um, put it on a third-party host, run their operations for one hour, two hours, shut it down, and start it up again. But that's an indicator because of the way that they do it. Yes. That we could see that with the signal, the domain being purchased, the um, being hosted and shut down. So just a newly observed domain might be an indicator that yeah. might be suspicious. Yeah. And if they're changing every hour, then that's going to have a pattern of changing an IP address every hour, which is not normal behavior for legitimate infrastructure. So the, the next one that we have here is that a connection is not necessarily equivalent to a solid analytical lead. And what I mean by this is if you're looking, let's say you're looking at your web server logs at your company and uh, you see an IP address in there that's maybe conducting some sort of attack uh, or they're trying to conduct an attack on your infrastructure and that IP address is associated back to Russia. It doesn't necessarily mean that someone in Russia uh, is trying to attack you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, in fact, it may just be some sort of proxy or compromised IP address. It could be a legitimate uh, piece of infrastructure that, that the actors are using to obscure uh, who who they actually are. Could be your mother getting infected with malware and the threat actors proxying through their machine yeah. to go do their attack. Yeah, no doubt. Now, you know, here's the thing. You see an IP address that's associated with Russia in your logs, and you know, you're you're a banking institution and you know it could be an anomaly. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, part of the Ukraine separatist forces, you know, at that point in time, you might want to take a little bit more consideration as to what you're looking at. But what we're trying to say here is that having a connection, that single point, is not necessarily indicative of the person that's trying to attack you or that you're dealing with something malicious. And that's where you need to look at the complete signals and look at the complete picture to, before you make your determination. Yeah, you want to use the experience that you have. You want to evaluate the results. You want to ensure that you're collecting as much data as possible. Now, for me personally, I like to have at least three points of proof. Uh, three connections out to, through different data sources mm -hmm. to help back up the claim that I have. The last caveat of uh, threat infrastructure analysis is really that the process itself is not really static. Mm -hmm. Keeping in mind that the internet um, is going to be changing all the time, that infrastructure can change at any moment, us doing our investigation today may yield a certain amount of results. But if the actors come through and change their infrastructure afterwards, if we come back and look at it tomorrow, we might be dealing with completely new connections or new indicators of compromise that we may want to feed back into our processes, our systems. So unlike a, a case where we might take a, a piece of malware and write a report about all of its capabilities, that's very static. 
Um, with infrastructure, it requires you to constantly go back and keep up to it, uh, which can be difficult. So you need to have a way to constantly monitor all of these different data sets and the, in particular, the indicators that you found interesting. So the, how it evolves over time, how it grows or shrinks um, or changes, because once something gets burned, it might swap completely and you need to be able to then find those connections and try to link it back together. Yeah, and in there's some cases where, uh, you know, I've been part of investigations that have ran for nearly two years of starting with one piece of information, expanding it, having someone burn that, uh, finding a new linkage, find, and then keeping it, you just follow that process down. Um, and, and it can take a long time to, to keep up with these actors, um, especially since they're motivated typically through financing, uh, through financial means in, in order to get money, or if it's a government or state sponsored uh, work, you know, it's, it's part of their job to do this. So some of the ways that we'll get to later will be like projects and how I can put these indicators in and tell it to monitor. Yeah. So then I'm not constantly rewriting these queries every single day to see if there's changes. The system will do it for me. And as the data comes in that matches a change into those indicators, um, I will then see it immediately. Yeah, we'll definitely be covering that and how we can use the platform that, that Risk IQ has created, uh, Passive Total, to essentially help accelerate our, our uh, data collection, but also help us do the continuous monitoring aspect as well.